Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Stefan Imblad. I'm an illustrator, graphic designer and artist and I live and work in Stockholm, Sweden. In this webinar I want to show you um, one of ways, uh, one of these things that I do when I want to come up to speed with an idea. In this case I have an idea uh, and I'm going to use the freehand mask tool. I have an idea but I'm really not comfortable to start by using uh, the outline pen. Uh, to um, to start to draw with. So what I'm actually going to do is to simply use blocks, blocks of paint um, and shapes. That's what you can see this as. Like, as. So to by working with the mask tool, the freehand mask and the, um, the rectangular mask is something that I use quite a lot in this case. And uh, and sometimes maybe you, you see this in your own work that you have an idea and you uh, and you really want to get up to speed and but for some reason you know the it's not your day and it's difficult to difficult to to get it done on paper using uh, just a, an ordinary pen. So in this case, it could actually be very good to simply use this technique. Uh, for me, in a way, it's very liberating. I'm I'm just putting up blocks because sometimes you know when in our head we sometimes we have contours of an idea but sometimes you know the, it, it it is just like a like you squeezing your eyes looking at something from afar and you get kind of a, an outline uh, like shadows or just uh, yeah blocks of of color um, and in that, this case black so with this technique as you can see I've already done quite a lot here in just a couple of seconds uh, and if I weren't talking at the same time trying to explain this uh, quick technique to uh, liberate the inspiration let the inspiration start uh, to work a little bit um, for me anyway my view on on, it, on uh, inspiration is to never wait for the inspiration to come to me Instead, I have to, because I work professionally as an illustrator, I always have to deliver. So, because I always have to deliver, it's really important for me to, to quickly come up to speed with an idea. Um, nor me, myself or my client can wait for me to get in an inspirational mode. And the thing is, uh, Mostly when when we start to work, uh, the inspiration will come to us anyway, as soon as we start to work. Um, because one thing leads to another, you know, and that saying. So, um, now I'm just going to um, show you a little bit more before I start to... Um, to work more with uh, more details using the eraser tool also is to show you the brush tools the, the, what I open here now it was the artistic media I already had brush settings docker open so artistic media docker is also very good and you can see that it says groups and I have a lot of groups of different paint, uh, brushes that are already made by Corel but I also created my own brushes, brushes sometimes and and I also use uh, a selection of brushes that I made and here's a, a group that I've created with the brushes that I thought would work quite well for this webinar. What I'm going to do here now is I focus here on the uh, artistic media here. So what I want to show you is how easy it is to uh, create your own list of brushes. As you can see I just made a, a dash underscore sky list stuff on here. And the thing with this is to um, let's go to a uh, set of brushes. We take the art brush up here on the list, which are the some of the brushes that Corel uh, created. And what it does is that if I now paint with this brush here, and um, if I select it, I won't be able to add it in Add Brush to Group, which it says up here. It, it goes a little bit out of screen, sorry for that, but it says actually Add Brush to, to Group. You can't add something that's already added. So when you come in that situation, what you actually just do is to take a pause for one second and go down and select the, the group that you want it to wind up in. 
And then you select it once again and you go to the little back arrow here and then you can see add brush to group and then you add it and it should show which it does down here. So now we have that brush added. What we also could do of course is to remove brush from group is that if you don't want to have that in, in your customized group now it's just always see to that you select it and then remove brush from group. What you also could do also is you can, as you can see here, it says create brush group. Once again, the word group is out of the screen when I'm recording it, but it does say create brush group. So you can actually, so you can always create new brush groups for yourself. Okay, so um, I've just uh, done a, uh, some tweaking for the center piece here. As you see, is since the, the last clip a couple of seconds ago for you watching this I've changed quite a lot here and also started to to raise and made some uh, marks here and the, the the thing is and I'm gonna be showing you how quickly uh, using this technique um, I can I'm just gonna first uh, choose the uh, eraser tool in question and the, the whole thing is to show you how quickly I can uh, get a sense of an idea of an image and 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 what I do now is to just erase fairly rough uh, roughly so and all these um, areas here now um, uh, it looks kind of brutally um, are kind of intended because what it does, although I might not, uh, I, I, not might, I, I won't keep everything, of course, but and I will uh, cover it with new colors and all that. But it also give me um, a sense of uh, where I'm heading. It also give me new ideas. It's good to, you know, when we all know when we work with things, we we add and we remove, add and remove, and the fun thing about learning the uh, tricking the mind for inspiration to get going is to start doing things so again my my recipe to start uh, getting things to happen is not to wait for inspiration it's to start work as I said and um, that will eventually awakens the inspiration and um, also here, for example, I'm going to remove the size of that, or reduce, rather. Uh, and then just simply uh, see what happens um, after a while. Because the fun thing here, I'm already seeing that I'm going to already going to cover <laughs> parts of these outlines I'm erasing. Uh, and that's, that's, that's so fun how, the, how our mind works. Uh, is to erase and add and erase and add. Actually, I, I learned this technique uh, when I was going in school, when I was like thir 13 years old or even younger. Uh, I think maybe it was when I was 13 and my teacher said, you know, you, you paint with your oily crayons or drier crayons and then you just sit there and uh, with thicker paint and then took some tool and just scratch on the paper and so on. So basically that's the t technique I'm using here as well. So okay, I'll, I'll sit here and uh, do some erasing and fixing and then I'll get back to you and show you when I'm um, gonna put some uh, more colors to this image. But you get the, the basic idea already I guess and uh, it's it's interesting how by adding and removing an image suddenly starts to have its own life and, and I, new ideas uh, come to life. I love it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. See you in a bit. Okay, so now I've come this far with all the erasing and uh, using of mask tools. So, this is the where, where I take another step in, in creating this image and that is when I fill the color with one flat color um, which is perfect that will set the tone and many other things in me moving forward with my illustration 
But I also want to take now um, the, the opportunity to show you a couple of other four new tools that we're having in PhotoPaint X7. Those are the liquid tools, smear, twirl, attract, and repel. Play around and choose which one works for you best. But I just want to show you one thing, because as I've told from the beginning, um, I didn't exactly know what this image was going to be. I'm more comfortable uh, about what it's going to be. I'm feeling more and more that my ideas that I had initially is is coming into shape, into, into some sort of form. But I don't know, for example, if I'm going to use a background behind this city in the clouds, uh, if it's going to be a mountain, mountainous uh, background or streets or anything. But let's say it would be streets, for example, uh, or a mountain, for example. Uh, it would be perfect to just um, use that to, to start trying out and see what, what actually would work best. So I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush nib and then just for, just for show, just drag one simple uh, brush stroke there. And then I use, in my case, I'm going to use the Attract. What it does is that you place yourself over the brush that you just painted, and as you can see, as I talk, I I, I press down with my Wacom pen tablet and then just push upwards. Of course, you can put you can push and drag them in all kinds of directions, and uh, depending on the size of your of, of the brush nib, uh, you will grab more or less uh, color, so to speak, from that. Um, from that brush stroke or whatever it's you painted, and um, and of course if you wanna, so it doesn't matter if you're gonna make a sharp fen or mountains or hills or valleys. This could actually help you quite a lot when you're trying to fig, uh, trying to help your imagination and inspiration to get up to speed with whatever kind of work you're doing. And it's actually very good, even if you're not going to use this eventually at the end, it, it might give you um, help in uh, moving forward. Okay, so um, I'm just going to take this um, square chalk and the nib up here, I've changed the nib. I'm, with that, doing that, I'm retaining the, the, the square chalk brush that I'm using retaining the uh, the effects uh, to it but it also changes a little bit the uh, the way I, uh, the, f the speed that I can uh, apply the paint this nib just works uh, actually it's thicker more dense so it covers much more areas very more quickly whereas if I use the uh, preset uh, square it will take a little bit longer make finer details so to speak I'm seeing here also that I should use some sort of um, light here because I'm I've been looking at it and I, it, this just have to be light came, coming up from here. I'll tell you right away. I'll I'll remove this and change it to something else uh, most definitely. But what it does, it gives me a reminder that something's gonna be applied here. Something's happening here. Uh, some action going on, there's something coming out from there, or whatever, I haven't decided yet, maybe people or an airplane or whatever. But, uh, so, now I've done this, so I'll give me a couple of seconds and look back, lean a little bit, lean back and look at it a little bit, and then I'll come back again, and in full swing, and you hear me talking and painting uh, again, so. Okay, so I think I'm gonna Let's see those at that. Okay, so I, what I'm now gonna I'm gonna add some more color here. I think I'm gonna use a um, yeah this gray. This is about uh, it can be eighty percent black. So this gray, eighty percent black. Just gonna paint that in using the same brush and a little bit roughly like this. And the same here. I also think that I'm going to put some light effect here now. But before I do that, I'm going to paint in some more this color here. I'm going to cover this one here because I don't want to keep that 
thingy anymore. So I'm just gonna come to there like this. And then I'm gonna take another color and I think I'm actually gonna go with let's see if we can find some earthy color here. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna select this one here that would actually help me to quickly find uh, something here that I want and I'll go down here to a little bit red I think that's kind of cool so now let's see yeah I created one there I'm just gonna paint that in now um, and if I want some more red on this one here later on I could actually Add some details, and that would give some depth also. So it's just not just a flat all the time. Um, so um, I'm also just starting to think about maybe I should put some crane or something like that here, um, coming down in front of the the whole thing, and that would add some perspective and feel to it as well. But before I do that, I'm gonna take one of these let's see uh, find something that's a bit pinkish so I'm actually gonna take one of these colors that I already have here I don't think I'm gonna try this one and see how that looks because I'm thinking about putting some um, we go over here and then some red. What I'm picturing in front of my myself here is, is that the sun, or whatever the, the light source, whatever is coming here, it could be sun, it could be something else, of course, um, shining in here on this part of the on this building here. I'm just gonna put that over here. And that light coming here most definitely not coming here. Not at this stage. Maybe I could put some an outline there and see if we can keep that. It's like a cool reflective actually adds to the to the uh, cylinder kind of shape the perspective feel to it. And see what happens there. So we'll let that be for a moment, and I'm just going to erase a little bit of this. Sorry, that was a little bit too much. Um, like that. Okay, and then uh, save. I actually think I'm going to tone down the opacity of this one over here, and then try to see if I could add some additional, see how that would work. Save that. I'm not actually going to use the um, text tool and I'm going to choose a, um, a font that I like and I think I'm gonna use let's see if I have that installed actually I have the open type selected and nothing here stylistic sets I can remove so I can see all the the ones that I want to work with and I'm gonna take one of my favorites this is made by a font a found foundry in um, in America uh, South of America not South America, but one of the southern states in America. Um, what a great one. And um, and then I'm just going to write A column with a little thingy on it, and then 12. The A12 itself doesn't mean anything, of course. Uh, 1, 2, just because that is first in the, you know, digits in the alphabet and A, so it doesn't have to mean anything at this point. 
I actually think that I'm uh, um, now let's see if that actually became that one let's see yeah it was yeah I was a little bit uh, unsure there for a moment and the thing now with the photo paint is like I'm going to show you something here um, if you look at it because both Coral Raw and Coral Photo Paint supports full open type support stylistic sets and ligatures and if you have the font you know what I mean what this actually does also if when I select the text you see you see this little black arrow and that, that little black arrow will actually um, allow me to see if the designer of the font uh, have actually made some additional designs to so the font can look a little bit different for example if I have a fraction where, and it says stylist is set 14 we can go down here and see if there is actually more that didn't show up in the screen now so here I actually have three versions of this this font here so I can use the original the fraction and the stylistic in this case I'm actually gonna go with the stylistic set 14 and see if that works for me so now I actually change that so I change that back again and then you see that it actually differs a little bit now I actually didn't follow with me there so I'm gonna go back there and take the stylistic set 14 so that means that I've suddenly used an open type font that you can use on both on a Mac and a PC and I'm using a PC so um, and now I'm just gonna increase the size of this one here and from here I'm just gonna now I'm just gonna um, use the pick tool and then from here I'm just gonna see if I could just drag it into place I think that the text uh, and the numbers here actually give uh, a cool effect to this bridge or whatever it is and then the uh, the empty key and then I click save and then um, I'm gonna go to fit and now I'm just gonna look at it and see how it looks like at this moment I think it's a little bit too bright so what I then just do is that I will use the opacity instead of changing the color of it but I also want to show you here now because it says a here it's because I'm using the text tool but I could actually change this and render as an object what that actually means if as long as it is a text object um, it, it I can still edit the text but if I render it as an object and sometimes that's actually preferable then I can just make it into to an object if you're a user an old season user of a coral photo paint let's say you go back to uh, using um, photo paint excuse me, photo paint or Coral Draw X4 or something like that, or X3 and older, then the uh, the text object basically always became an object, uh, different from how it works today. But I'm going to keep it like this because I, if I want to change the font, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to drag down the opacity and because it's not going to take the center place in that sense as the colors over here. So now we have text over there. I think I'm actually going to add some more text somewhere. Okay, so the another text, another text that I'm going to use. It. You see that I use text tool and American Captain in the same font. So I'm going to write B, second after A, and then three, four, five, which is after one and two. So and I'm just going to drag that up a little bit in size. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Click the enter key, and then with the pick tool, I'm gonna click one, two, and then shape this into sort of perspective feel. So let's see how this looks when it's a little bit closer. Yeah, I think that's cool. And then enter key again. Click save just for safety, and then add some um, opacity again. And now I can see this one. I actually could go to this one and see that the opacity is 17. So I could actually put 17 here as well. 
so we get the same opacity. And I, what's so cool now is that you see the because it's shining through now, so I see the the texture, the the brush underneath cave. So now you see also why I'm using uh, more of a loose kind of painting. Um, so, so it's not so many flat colors. So I instantly get that kind of uh, text, texture field that I'm after. And then control to save. Okay, so that's kind of cool already. I don't know if there should be any, any uh, text down here. But what I'm actually going to do now is to... I want to play around a little bit to see if I shouldn't actually add... Um, had some uh, something happening here, so I'm actually gonna play around with it and see if, how this works. So I'm, I'm gonna use a loose pen instead of just a standard, or instead of painting so detailed right away, I'm actually gonna use this one here uh, and very loosely make something. And then after that, of course, I'm going with a more detailed pen and. Um, Um, paint in details or sharp edges so it gets a little bit more transparent feel so let's see what happens when it's kind of cool and nice to just play around like this um, I'm just gonna erase that and I'm gonna erase with a uh, so we keep that one I think I'm going to remove here as well. Because it doesn't have to be so thick up here. Um, and I'm going to remove here as well. I don't know if that actually looks so much more real. But this is something uh, to work with. So I'm just going to click save. And pause and look at it a little bit more maybe. Or older than I try to see if I could something like that. Maybe should have. What do you think? I'll click save there and see what what I can do with that one. Now I'm just gonna pause a little bit. I'm just gonna zoom in here, and I think I'm actually gonna. So chalky brush, and then simply paint over this one here. Um, I'm not going to use that chalk. I'm going to use another one. Uh, oops, over there, big soft chalk. The other one just was well, just mixing the colors, and I, I didn't want to go that that road to mix them in that sense. So I'm just gonna paint in colors here and see what so it goes a little bit together with the with surrounding and still standing out so, so that it doesn't kind of just melt in with the environment. And then From there, I'm just gonna add another one, add a multiply, and see what happens. Yeah, so we can do it like that. Yeah, probably should be a, a shadow of sort there. Like that, something like that. That's a little bit too. Um, yeah. A little bit too fast there for my own taste. So the sunlight should come from underneath, so this shadow should probably start more like here. Instead of putting there, it should just something like that. Start there, add some fun, fun in the middle there, continue. Basically, drawing something that I really don't know what kind of type of equipment this is or exactly how it's going to look. So, 
it's gonna evolve the more I work with this one here. So I'm just gonna add some things that might become some sort of detail later on. So click save to that and then to fit and see how that looks. <clears throat> of course this one here can't be that black, it could still, still be dark but I would prefer if that one actually has um, uh, a darker one. So here's um, actually, I think you could use that one. Uh, no, okay. So just paint something in there because it's um, it's a little bit too too. The dark is too bold now, so the perspective it becomes a little bit di uh, uh, odd. It cannot take away the. Uh, the feeling of perspective as you probably can see if I'm not I'm not totally finished yet with this color here but but if you see too for example if I activate this now you see it's pretty dark now and that's okay but by adding a little bit brighter it doesn't get so bold uh, and um, that could actually work quite well I think I'm gonna reduce that opacity a little bit and add that's gonna see if we can reduce that and then I'm gonna just paint over the other color here so, so they kind of mix together save. Okay, so I'll add some blue there, so we're using the same kind of uh, um, color that I can see on different places on this image. I'm also going to connect these here. Uh, maybe put some here as well. And what I'm basically doing is trying to get a. Ah, sorry, not looking correctly. So, what I'm basically doing <laughs> is. Um, I'm pressing the, uh, the Shift Alt key here now. If, if for anyone who's wondering what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing straight lines. But with this one here, I also want to show you how I work with shadows. And um, one of the shadows here to, I mean, this one here is not a shadow, but the shadow that I add here now, and I'm adding all over the image now on both sides, um, on these two two bridges, uh, with lack of a better word. Um, so I'm actually adding that, and, and already you see it by knowing a little bit by how to work with shadows. It's very quickly to to create a 3D feel. So this was pretty flat, and so I just created first with the uh, the blue, uh, purple, and then um, this one behind. Okay, so now it's finally some time to do something about this light effect here. I'm actually going to remove these two, and um, Let's see where I put them. Okay, so I have 99 there. Object in 99. It's, so I'm going to put something above there. And what that is now is going to be this blue with a tad of green in it. And you can do this light effect in many ways. 
Um, I'm, I'm going to try to not use too many steps, um, but depending on how much work you want to make to a light effect, you can at some at, and sometimes use the Gaussian blur effect, for example. You can also use why not the tone curve to add some um, panache to the whole thing, and I might use that one. But what I'm trying to work with here anyway is to put this blue-gray color and then on that one I'm going to use a, a, a smaller nib size of the brush so I get just enough white over there and on top of that now I'm going to take a black and then basically um, first I'm gonna put another Hard outline over there, so, I, so it gets some definition in the contour here. Um, and then my, maybe I need to add some more white there now. Okay. Um, so I'll add some more white like that. And from and from there, I'm just going to add a couple of what I was thinking is that it could be nice to have a um, um, like pillars or something like that, giving some uh, details to this one here. And um, yeah. And then, of course, I'm just going to add some, um, try to see if Tone Curve could help me. There's always a good, uh, sometimes it's very good to use some of these. Okay, that would affect the whole image. So what I do now is to select all these four and then Control M. So I select them with a the mask tool. And from there, I'm going to Tone Curve. That way, it only affects the uh, the objects in question. So I'm just gonna put some darkness to that down here and then I brighten up the, the light a little bit to get some action going on there and of course I put that in northern order. So so here's off and here's on. So you said, saw that it got a little bit more definition there. So that's a good idea. Uh, to use the the lens objects as it's called in photo paint and some other programs may call it adjustment layers okay so I want to show you a, a couple of quick things that I'm gonna do I'm gonna start by painting clouds so I'm gonna jump a little bit forward here now and then show you more how I create this image this illustration as we go but to save some time I'm gonna show you the basic techniques you can paint clouds differently. It all depends on what type of clouds you're going to have. But I'm thinking about putting some clouds behind here. So let's say I'll start with a round nib. Um, and we take a um, just an art brush and custom art brush there. And uh, I'm just going to make that a little bit more solid. Okay, so what, we, what I'm now going to do is basically first to to make this cover it itself a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So I'm actually going to uh, take just a little bit over there and then I'm going to take something here behind and then I'm going to mirror it a little bit over here and then I'm going to take some parts over here. So that's the start. So let's say I'm going to make some puffy clouds uh, um, where the wind have, uh, <clears throat> have a special looks. That's where I'm starting to basically just work in on the edges of this one. So, um, and then I can make this sometimes actually a little bit bigger. So although I'm going to make small touches here and there, a bigger brush can sometimes make finer details. Yes, it sounds a little bit backwards, but it's actually true. Uh, you, you'll find your way and your kind of feeling on how you paint clouds. But as you can see, that instead of doing it 
a lot of small details in the middle. Just add some, uh, try to add some uh, small details, uh, fluffy things on the edges. And all these other parts here, now we can just decrease the size and then uh, work a little bit inwards like that. And suddenly we have what I would say our clouds. But of course, that's just one part. So let's say I want to have some uh, effect to that. I could just use a gray. Sometimes you can use a blue, depending on what kind of color you want the um, the um, the, uh, the clouds in. So that's a little bit too dark. I thought the other one didn't really. Act. Okay, here's better. So now I'm just gonna. I could pick a solid again. So I know that the middle here is actually uh, similar. And sorry for that. And then I <laughs> and then I just repeat the the uh, the same thing here again. Going to um, oopsie daisy. But just try to be freely uh, work freely here with a uh, firm but still sensitive way of painting it in. So what you could do then is to simply use various shades of gray and white and uh, some other colors like blue or something like that to work uh, your way forward with making clouds this way. Okay, so that's just one way of doing it. So you just uh, continue. Uh, me, for example, I'm going to um, think of, I'm going to paint some more clouds going in this direction, like this. And you'll see that too. But I also want to show you a couple of other things. Okay, another thing that I want you to look at now is that um, go to the brush settings docker. And, um, okay, this is out of screen, so I'm going to pick the, the brush nib that I'm looking for. Uh, either this one that comes with the program by default, a man and a woman silhouette, or you can use one of the ones uh, you, you might you might create your own. These three uh, are ones that I've created myself, and usually I have even more created. Anyway, so the, the, the whole idea of this is to also look over here. Um, there's a little slider here, and as you dry, uh, drag it uh, to the right and to the left, as you can see here in the preview window, it um, uh, have a, an opacity uh, transparency applied to it. So basically, as what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll, I'll have a black, and then I'll simply add a few here. Uh, and if I just press softly or more harder, you can see that the, the brush actually make them bigger or smaller. Um, and then you can just go over here to the... And uh, I'm going to paint these um, much nicer in just a short while. But the basic is, is that I want to show you the basics. And as you can see, these are just up in the air. And that's, of course, not uh, what I want. But when you do this, and you're also going to show later, see later on, is that I'm going to add some clouds and and, and fog. So what I what I do is that I add the fog, but then of course also what I do is to simply take a, a brush and simply tap on them. So even though I would put paint in front of them and backwards uh, behind. Um, this actually helps giving a, a, a feeling of um, a better feeling of the whole thing. So again, take note of this one here um, as you add your woman and man and different silhouettes and then just make them differently uh, transparent and tap on them. And just remember, instead of by using this one here instead of the entire objects transparency in the object docker you can have one object and you have different transparencies on each figure which is pretty good and and this 
This, of course, is one of the older techniques, how we can do this. One of the new techniques that came with, uh, if you had a premium account with the uh, PhotoPen X6, but which you have now in X7, is to use a different technique. You basically use the same thing, but you use another tool. So um, let's say I'll just paint a couple of people here, and then make, make the same thing by holding down the old key, and then you see this slider coming up, and that's a, a transparency one. So, again, move over here, and then I have a, a lighter. So, this is extremely cool uh, and very good. So, then you don't have to go back and forth here in the brush setting stockers. Just remember, press down the Alt key, and then the slider opens, and you can adjust by the fly, so to speak. And that's, uh, that's really, really cool. Um, and very very useful and then of course you use the same technique uh, to just tap on them because you're gonna understand why I tap them like this when I add the clouds and so on so alt key alt key alt key okay, okay. Uh, as you can see I'll, I'll jump forward a little bit so you see, can now see that I've actually started to paint clouds underneath here and um, what I'm also going to do is to actually ditch the yellow now background and instead I've used a flat of a blue which is going better together with this um, feeling of the of the of the sky and everything and what have you and uh, and although the sky is the color is above I want it to be this kind of blue color underneath as well so uh, that's just what I wanted so what I now want to do is to show you how I actually work with um, using a solid nib and control out and do something that's really 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 simple. Um, well, that's actually on the on the wrong uh, object. So it's the, the idea is nothing revolutionary. You just pick a um, a dark color that you think would will work and then simply out of screen and into screen and then out of screen again you just um, make them this large I'm actually gonna take I think I'm gonna take a, a lighter version of this later on and then you can just um, um, add totally brutal like this and um, it's actually gonna be erased of course and then sometimes you can just go freely with your hand um, but even if you go freely uh, see too that the uh, the outline is basically the same size for that again that's typical um, and then just um, add back and forth and and don't do overthink the whole thing too much and just add them a little bit randomly thinking about how would streets actually look from let's say you're on an airplane you will probably see that streets come in um, different directions like that like this so basically here's that's one way of doing it and then of course you can always add this transparency to it and the lighter you make them the more re real they look underneath so that just one very quick way of showing you what you're going to see later on in my finished illustration. Okay, so that's one way. Hope you like that idea. Among many things in this webinar, uh, te techniques that I want to show you in how I finish out, out my um, my illustrations for this webinar is to show you the the great use of rotating guidelines i think it's called it's actually is called angled guidelines in photo paint i just call them rotating guidelines so would you might have if you you saw how i just place this rotation angle anywhere where I, where i want the the rotation angle to be so if the angle is here you can drag the outline in various directions and it will always stay here as the as uh, the the angle of rotation so to speak. And what this does actually help me to have the feel of how the airplane is in the direction of the airplane when I'm when I start to draw for example if I now on this object here start to draw um, 
let's say uh, uh, one of the wings and then one of the back wings over here and um, something like that and then let's see uh, we'll do something like that you see that by using the guideline here now I quickly see how it's going to be placed and the perspectives of the airplane and more importantly so um, I'll be finishing this airplane after I showed you all the techniques that I want you to I like to show you but um, you now let's see if I'm gonna take some darker green now for example um, and uh, I'll take another object over there and then I just I just paint over this one here I'm gonna be pretty brutal and uh, so on as I just want to show you some good technique with which is how to work with highlights and one way of there are many ways how you can build up um, a set of highlights to to an object uh, some parts of, a, of something in an image um, you can of course uh, simply works with different shades of gray or white or red or anything and you start with a darker one and then you just add another brighter one of course that's what a highlight is a highlight of course add uh, not only highlight it also helps giving a good feel of, um, of volume and perspective to an image and now I'm gonna add a, a multiply effect and then just drag to 50 and I'm still using the same green color so um, let's see if I can just uh, I thought it, that it was uh, going to be it was a little bit too bright over there but um, I just add a little multiply here so I can get a shadow um, effect darker effect here um, so this the sun or whatever it is the light source coming from this direction and maybe this direction winds up on the wing, wing and uh, use some artistic freedom also as well so you get that feeling of 3D uh, of um, volume so let's see if, let's say we've done that and now um, another thing that I just want to have is well maybe we actually should add another multiply go to 50 or 30 or 40 somewhere in between there again and then just use a um, another darker here so get some more definition to the image here and then maybe something here and why not something even more on this one here I go back to this one here you see you're gonna tell some uh, tell people a little story about what you're gonna do and then you see it's all the details that I want that you want to create all the time but okay so you see the shape of the airplane now and uh, another thing here of course is to use the lips tool to just add some um, um, windows to the airplane so what I'm using is the ellip ellipse tool and just drag them a little bit you can of course uh, constrain them so they keep the same the same um, perfect ellipse but I'll just copy and paste on whatever technique you want, you want to do but the the main thing what I want to show you now here is how I'm going to use a brush tool but add a uh, certain brush we're going to add we're actually going to add a gray okay so what I now want to show you is um, I'm going to use a um, first uh, sort of light gray color here and here's the sorry I have to do that a little bit I'll do that again so this is the tip of the the wing there in the back so that has to be a little bit uh, thinner and then I just increase the size again and what I do then after that is try to feel this as a as a volume so I go down and there's some cool paint some design I invented for this uh, airplane which is actually me but let's pretend there's someone else who's done it uh, and then uh, okay we'll we'll settle with that I think 
and then I just drag it underneath these uh, these windows. Actually, I think I can drag them up a little bit over there. Yeah, so that so that is fine. And what I do now is to um, actually should continue over there, shouldn't it? Yeah, something like that. So what um, what I do now is to to th start thinking about another brush for, for the highlight. I could go with just another light gray, and that would be perfectly okay. But there are some effects that we can use that are pretty cool also. And if you go to Artistic Media Tool, and one of the brushes that I've chosen here uh, among the brushes that I put in my uh, uh, brush list was this Small Soft. And um, I'm just going to take another color here, which is a uh, even lighter gray, just by using it as a lighter, of course, make it lighter. But, but the thing is, let's say I want to have a one highlight color over here, but instead of going now back and create a new object and another shade of gray, I just go back again. So let's say I, I can go back and back and it adds more lightness to that tip. Did you see that? So if I'm going to remove the guidelines, you can see more clearly how that actually added a nice effect. And so I just add more and it becomes a little bit brighter um, all the time. But another thing that I want you to look at now also here is, um, let's say we have a reflection from something coming from this direction and reflects, although it's, it, it, the plane here is in shadow, but some, something is reflecting on the plane. And one way of doing that effect, of course, is to, again, we go to, uh, let's say we go to a new object there, and then just take, uh, let's say we could use the same gray maybe, try that out, and then we go to, sorry, we go to the new object that I've added, and use merge modes uh, that you can find uh, here in the, um, the object manager. You can also sh find them over here, but I'm going to use the one in the object manager because there is some slight difference between the merge mode over here and the one in the profit bar. So I'm going to use something called soft light. Okay, so by using a soft light now, you see how it actually gives a soft effect to that area and also this part here. But um, I don't know if, I'm, if I want to use any of the brightness over here, so I'm just going to add this one here and try to see if that actually is enough. So I just add a brightness here, and then maybe, nah, the, that light effect would probably go over here and reflect over more parts of the plane. So by using, doing this, I've suddenly got one, two, three, um, reflections on this plane and then I could use the soft uh, brush effect to the wing over here as well and suddenly this plane is starting to come to life and get a, a very nice feel of volumes as you can see and then of course I could add more texture to the image by using another brush or something like that and one way of adding, let's say if I would have a, um, a wheel or something that the plane is standing on here, if I would use, um, let's see if we're going to take something, uh, we'll take a darker green here, that I, or some, some green that I used here, we're just going to, for show, just draw that now over here, and let's see if we can add a darker one here. Uh, so now that almost disappeared. Another one, if we now place ourselves on a new object, take a, a new brush, and let's say that we take, uh, uh, let's say we take one of the orange colors that I'm using in my illustration as a whole as well, and then go back to, uh, let's say, the square chalk, and then take a larger brush now. I want the 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 wheel the stand the um, for the wheel over there as I put it. So I want that to show now, and of course that shows when I add some brighter.
behind it. Now that is a little bit too much, wasn't it? So what I then do is I could go to the brush settings docker also and rotate this brush a little bit. Um, that would help a little bit because it, what I do actually is to position the, the angle of, of the brush and then just simply I'm actually going to reduce the size a little bit of it. Maybe it was a little bit too big. And then I just add uh, some effect to it. So like if there was color or, or the sun or something like that coming underneath here, um, it gives a nice textured feel instead of the other ones that I've been using that are more solid or tend to, to be more solid type of brush. So with these quick steps, I put the foundation for an airplane showing you how to use the uh, rotating guidelines so you can see the position of the plane, the direction for how it's been landing on the platform. I show you how to make quick um, run windows, of course, very simple, but more importantly, how to work with volume for this airplane with the different uh, types of... Uh,